Okay, polar coordinates, you guys. We're going to convert. Goal number one, we're going to convert between polar and rectangular coordinates. Goal number two, to graph in polar coordinates. So what are polar coordinates? It's another system for locating a, a point in a plane, or points, plural, in a plane, uh, using a radius and an angle. So if you think about it, the coordinate system you're used to is called rectangular coordinates. We go left or right or up and down from the origin to locate a point, right? Uh, here, it's going to be a little different. Let me show you. Let's suppose you have a point in the plane, and I'd like you to draw a ho little horizontal line. But it's not a complete line. It's more of a ray. It has a beginning point, which would coincide with the origin, I suppose. I if you want to relate this to uh, something you're familiar with, it would be like the positive x-axis. This ray that I've drawn would, be an a would, be, would coincide with the positive x-axis. And this point right here, which we call the pole, would correspond with the origin. So then we have this point. You're used to representing the coordinates as x, y. Uh, so in, in regular rectangular coordinates, you would go from the pole right x units, whatever x is, and up y units to get to it. That's what you're used to, right? And it's called rectangular coordinates. But pretty, I think it's pretty obvious, because if you went right uh, if you went right x units and, and up y units, you'd be at the corner of, of this rectangle, wouldn't you? So it's called rectangular coordinates. That's what you're used to. But what's another way to locate that point? Well, you could go directly there from the pole, from the origin, essentially, and measure that distance, which we would call r, or a pirate would say, R, yeah, I know, I use that joke too much. Um, so that distance is R. And then you guys are very familiar with a, a, a related angle. The angle formed between the, well, usually we call it the x-axis. Here we'll call it the polar axis, I suppose. So polar axis, same as the positive x-axis. And it would be the usual theta, wouldn't it? The, dire the same theta as the direction angle when we're talking complex numbers or vectors. And so we would represent in polar coordinates this point x, y as the point r comma theta. So what you need to do, or the way you need to change your thinking when you're in polar coordinates for uh, point-wise is you think you, you have to think radially, like spokes on a wheel, and angularly. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> Keep making up words this week. Angularly. Instead of left, right, up, down, right? But it's not complicated. I'll show you. Look. So notice how my graph paper has changed. It looks like a wheel, right, with spokes on a wheel and concentric circles, right? So let's go ahead and plot the point 2 comma pi thirds. Uh, how to think about it? Well, OK, what's the pole, you guys? The pole, here's the pole, which is, well, you can't see that, so let me do it in red. The pole would be here, right, at the center of all these concentric circles. And the polar axis would be here on my graph paper. So before I plot this point, let's talk about a few angles. Uh, zero radians, you're looking straight right from the pole, right? It would uh, coincide with zero degrees. If you look straight up, that would be pi over two radians, which is the same as 90 degrees. We, we'll switch between degrees and, uh, and radian measure here. Uh, straight to the left, you're talking pi or 180 degrees. Mm, pi. If you go three quarters of the way around from the positive x-axis or the polar axis, you're at three pi over two. Familiar stuff, right? Uh, which is 270 degrees. So the way this particular type of graph paper is broken up, well, what angle must this uh, first spoke be at? <coughs> The way I've broken it up here, it looks like it's probably, what, 30 degrees, which would be what? Um, pi, 
pi six, right? Then we have one that splits the upper right hand quadrant, the first quadrant in half, so pi fourths, and then this guy, pi thirds. Pi thirds. Okay, now we're on our way. Uh, let me erase some of this stuff we don't need. Okay, so two pi thirds, a couple different ways you can graph it. Okay, uh, you can think of the angle first and sweep out an angle of, well, here's theta, right? Pi thirds. So you can sweep out an angle of pi thirds, and then how far do you go out? Two. Now, the way I like to think of it, though, I like to go out the distance first. I like to go out the distance of two. So from the origin, I'm here, go out one, two, I'm here, and then sweep out the angle along this uh, piece of the, this arc of the concentric circle, um, of one of the concentric circles at radius two. Um, and so that's going to be along this arc stop right there. There it is. So there you go, two pi thirds. Easy enough? Yeah, it's not bad. Let's do another one. Now this might throw you a little bit. So in that last problem, R was two, right? I didn't, st I, I didn't state it because you guys stated it for me, but in that last problem, R was two. What's R in this problem? R, is, R can be negative? I actually don't like it. I like to take the convention where R has to be positive, but a lot of books don't do that, so I put up with it here. By the time you get to Calc 3, R is never negative. Um, so let me show you what that means. Um, it, in this particular case, when R is negative, I'm going to actually do the angle first. So go out an angle of pi force. That puts you, that puts you kind of looking in this direction right here, right? But then instead of going, instead of going out one, to here, that's what it would, this would be the point if it were positive one comma pi force, right? But what do, you, what do you think you're gonna do then? Instead of going out in this direction, go the, go the other way, and here it is. So negative one comma pi force would be here. So you look in the direction of an angle of pi force in the first quadrant, and you go the opposite quadrant, opposite direction. In this case, a distance of one opposite direction. Does that make sense to you? So that's a little weird. Uh, are these angles unique, by the way? I mean, I'm sorry, are these, well, it does break down to the angles being unique, uh, partly at least. Are these points unique? Are the representations of these points unique would be a better way to say it. The points are unique, but at, at least for any particular coordinate system, but are there other ways to represent them? Yeah, certainly. Um, so for like, ne for this point, negative one pi over four, how could you represent it using maybe positive one? How would that change the angle? Well, um, well it, it couldn't be three pi over four because that would be, if you think about it, that would be an angle in the second quadrant, right? And we need an angle in the third quadrant, that's where this point is, whose reference angle is pi over four. So if you went 180 plus pi over four, which we, or I'm sorry, we're kind of mixing units here, aren't we? So uh, yeah, but, but since we're in radians, let's stay in radians. Let's go pi plus pi fourths, right? Or if you were in degrees, it would be 180 plus 45, right? Which would be 225. So what, what would it be then? You, you would take, pi plus pi force to get your angle, so, so what would that be? Five pi, five pi force. So the point here is the representation of points and polar coordinates not unique. And that's new because in, if you think in, about rectangular coordinates, there's only one way to represent a particular point. Right? Also, you could keep adding multiples of two pi to the angle, right? Or subtracting. And uh, you'd end up in the same spot, wouldn't you? Okay, so representation of points not unique in polar coordinates. Coordinate conversions, I claim you already know what they are. Um, if you think about, uh, okay, let's think back to vectors, you guys. When we were talking vectors, you could have uh, a vector V be, re this is good review for the final, right? A vector V be represented by a horizontal component 
V1, right? Or let's use just A and B, just to keep it simple. A horizontal component could be A, a vertical component could be B. But sometimes you weren't given the horizontal or vertical component, right? Sometimes you were just given the magnitude of the, uh, uh, of the vector and the direction angle, theta. And you had to come up with A. And you had to come up with B. Do you remember what the horizontal component was? It was yes. Magnitude of B, uh, B and magnitude of You're right so far. Magnitude V times. And it was on the magnitude within this equation. Isn't it amazing how fast the math fades away? I've always been amazed by that. Even I get, I don't get rusty at this class, but I do, maybe a little, maybe if I didn't teach it for five years, I would. But I do get rusty at like Calc 2, stuff I don't teach that often. It's amazing how fast you, you just lose a little bit. You get it back quickly, that's the good news. But you do lose it uh, pretty quickly. You do have to be in a constant state of review if, when you go on, especially when you go on in math. Cosine. It is cosine. It just comes from Sokotoa. So the horizontal component is uh, magnitude V cosine theta. The vertical component, magnitude V sine theta. Sine theta. So I if you think about it, we don't, we don't have the arrow here, do we? So I'm drawing XY, XY plane, but we often do that. We often do that instead of trying to draw concentric circles. If, if you know that this point is R theta, in polar coordinates, and in rectangular coordinates, it's x, y instead of a, b. We don't have the arrow here, do we? But the math works the same. If you draw in, if you draw in a hypotenuse and drop a perpendicular, you have your right triangle, and here's your angle theta, right? And then by Sokotoa, for instance, you know what? What do you know? Y is or let's not even go there. What, what trig function relates theta and y? Y is opposite side, so sine. So the sine of theta is equal to y over that hypotenuse, which we could call r, right? So what is y here? R sine, r sine theta. But guys, I mean, you need to learn to recognize, oh, that's exactly what this is, right? Different letters standing for the same sort of thing. So it's from Sokotoa, once again. It's, it's the same relationship we've talked about more than once before in a different kind of context. So what is that telling me? That's telling me that if I know what, what r and theta are from my, from my point in polar coordinates, I can get the y coordinate. y is equal to r sine theta, which is just the hypotenuse times sine theta, right? which just means, and y is the opposite. So that just means that the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over r if you solved it for sine theta. It's, it's so, the so part of Sokotoa all over again. What's x going to be? Um, r cosine theta. R cosine theta, the pirate said. Um, what about, what's the relationship between uh, the opposite side, the y, that is, the adjacent side, the x, and the theta, what, what kind of trig function unites them? Tangent. tangent, so what's the relationship there? Tangent theta is equal to y over, y over x. And there's one more handy dandy relationship that permeates the class that gives you r if, uh, if you have x and y. What is that? Right, or you could just leave it in, in the form of the Pythagorean theorem that you're used to. R squared equals x squared plus y squared. So technically, R could be positive or negative with respect to polar coordinates, and, and leaving it that way really shows it, right? Uh, you, but, you, you know, keep life simple. Usually just take R to be positive, unless you're forced to do otherwise. So these are your coordinate conversions. Um, and I claim, like I say, you already know them. You just have to remember them in this context. So let's, let's use one or more of those relationships. Here, we're going to convert to rectangular coordinates. You're given r theta is equal to uh, the point 5 comma pi over 6. So what's r? So this is kind of telling you r is 5. And what's theta? Pi over 6. 
So if we want to convert, we want to convert to x comma y, right? So we want x. We want x. What formula up here do we use? R cosine theta. So I'll write down the formula and then you fill it in. I think you already did. I think you said phi, right? Cosine pi 6. When you get a special angle like pi over 6, go ahead and take the cosine of, of pi over 6. What this is a good review for the final, right? What's the cosine of pi over 6? Root 3 over 2. So that's 5 times root 3 over 2, or just maybe since it's really 5 over 1, you could multiply straight across and write it as 5 root 3 all over 2. Okay, what would, in terms of what we're given here, whoops, started to write cosine. Uh, what would uh, y equal? Our sine, theta. our sine theta, which in this case is 5 sine. sine of pi over 6. So that's 5 times a half, right? So just 5 halves. So your, your ordered pair then would be 5 root 3 over 2 comma 5 halves. R equals the cosine of theta. Um, and that equation, hopefully it's obvious, that equation is in polar coordinates. How could we convert it to uh, rectangular coordinates? Well, it's, it's not always easy. It's, there's not always an elegant way to do it. You just have to make the conversion equations fit, maybe adjust them a little bit. But in this case, there is a neat trick that you might have learned. So look at the conversion equations. Again, we've got x equals r cosine theta. Uh, I don't think th that's going to help too much. Tangent uh, theta is equal to y over x. And we have r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Oh, maybe, maybe one of those will help x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. Okay, so what are we given here? Oh, we have on the right-hand side cosine theta. It would be nice to have what in terms of those equations above? It would be nice to have r cosine theta. And wouldn't it also be nice to have r squared? So we, we're given cosine of theta, but here, I'm, I'm trying to get you guys to look plug in what r equals into the bottom equation? You could, but that might be doing it the hard way. So it would, we have cosine, look at what you have. You, you have cosine theta, it would be nice to have r, it would be nice to have r times cosine of theta. You have r, it would be nice to have r squared. Is there a way to get both all in one? That's exactly right. So uh, just rewriting the given equation, we have r cosine of theta. Now I'm not squaring both sides, I'm multiplying both sides by r. That's the trick. And you're going to see this trick many, many times, not just in this class, but in Calc 2. Calc 2 will be the next time you see polar coordinates. So that gives us a very nice form to work with. R squared, I meant to switch to green. R squared equals R cosine theta. It gives us a nice form to work with because we know what R squared is. We've got a nice, nice thing to set that equal to. We know what r cosine theta is. We, we've got something nice to set it equal to. So what is r squared again? x squared plus y squared. So I'm just going to replace r squared with x squared plus y squared. What is r cosine theta? X. There it is. Now, we can go a little further, but that is the equation in rectangular coordinates. But we, we just got done talking about these kinds of equations. Any guesses on what this graph's to be? An ellipse is a good guess, but, but it might be a special kind of ellipse. A circle. Well, what, how could we be sure? What could we do? Graph it, but before we graph it, what do we need to do? We, need to we have to put it in standard form. So here's a good review of 5.2 stuff. Uh, what would we do first to put it in standard form? Uh, isolate, the, isolate the Y. Good, a and get the powers of X together, right? So I'm going to subtract x from both sides, you guys. x squared minus x plus y squared. And then that leaves me, for the time being, with 0 on the right-hand side if I subtract x from both sides. And so then what's the trick here? Maybe leave a little more space. 
Well, actually, I've got a one in front of the x squared. That's all I need. So what have I, what do I, I have x squared minus 1x if you want to put the, the coefficient in there. And just go ahead and complete the square on x squared minus x. What do you have to do first? Take half of the, oh, yeah, the y. No, the y squared's good. The y, the, the y squared's good. That's right. But what, what do you do to get the 1 over 4? Get half of 1. You take half the coefficient of the x, which is, yeah, well, no, uh, one, negative 1 is the coefficient of x, right? So what's 1 half of negative 1? Just multiply by ne negative 1 by, by 1 half. And you get negative 1 half. Notice I wrote it down there. And then the process, remember, to complete the square on x squared minus x then is to square that number and add it in there. So you, what do you get when you square negative 1 half? One fourth. So you add in one fourth, but you have to balance it out, right? So add one fourth to both sides. And then what is x squared minus x plus one fourth uh, factor to be? X one half. Quantity. Squared. Yeah, quantity squared. And then we still have the plus y squared equals one fourth. So this is the equation in standard form. And okay, it's not the standard form of the ellipse, is it? It's the standard form of what? A circle. If you wanted to, you could divide both sides by one fourth and get one on the right side, and then that would be the standard form of the ellipse, but there's no reason to. Because we know the standard form of a circle uh, looks like this. It looks like, um, well, x, if it, if it has a center other than the origin, x squared, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared, right? In this case, what's h and k? What's h and k? h and k, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you're right. <laughs> I was thinking something else. You are right, sir. So the center of this thing is, capital C for center, 1 half, 0. h and k are 1 half and 0. Does everybody see that? We should probably identify the fact that this is a circle, so maybe I should have done that first. So this is a circle. It is an ellipse, but be, be, if it's a circle, state that. Don't state that it's an ellipse. C for center, capital C for center of one half. What's the radius? One yeah, uh, the ra does everybody see why the radius is one half? Because on the right side, it's, it's actually r squared, right? So if you take the square root of what's on the right side here, you get a half. Square root of one-fourth is a half. So I like to ask this question on the test because it not only tests you on converting between uh, you know, uh, polar coordinates and rectangular, it tests you on whether or not you can complete the square and identify the conic section. So it's kind of an all-in-one problem, so I like this problem. Uh, if I ask it on the test, it won't be exactly the same, but it'd be similar. Convert to polar coordinates. So uh, what am I telling you then? If I say convert to polar coordinates, what, what is this negative one? Is it an r, a theta, an x, or a y? An it's an x value because that means, okay, if we're converting to polar coordinates, that means we're gonna be in rectangular coordinates. Is that clear? All right, so what do we need? We need r and theta, right? But I like what you said. You told me a relationship that's important. You told me that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And that will get me r. I can use that to get r, right? Because, uh, because I know x and y. So you have to know what you have in order to figure out how to get what you want. Um, so fill it in for me. What's r squared equal to? Yeah, because you get negative 1 squared, that's x, right, squared, plus 1 squared, which is 2. So what's r? Two. Yeah, now technically, if you wanted to do it in some crazy way, you could, you could take r to be, uh, I suppose, negative root 2, right? But don't. I mean, there's no reason to. Keep it simple. All right, so what else do I need? I need theta. I need theta. So what's the relationship between x and y and theta? It's a tangent. T okay, so tangent of theta equals what? 
Yeah, so it'd be y over x, which would be one over negative one. So you get tangent theta is equal to negative one, but you better be careful, because especially if you're relying on your calculator, let's, uh, let's switch, to, let's, let's be in degree mode just for fun, because we were in radian mode earlier. What, what would your calculator spit it? Now, this is something you should know, by the way, uh, without the calculator, but if you were relying on your calculator, what, what would your calculator spit out for theta? What would you do to both sides? Take the tangent inverse, so you take the tangent inverse of negative one, and what angle would your calculator spit out? It would spit, uh, no, well, no. no. It would spit out negative something because the tangent inverse is defined in which two quadrants? First and fourth. Tangent, you're thinking of where tangent's positive, but we need two quadrants where it's negative to make the inverse function make sense. So it's uh, where uh, one quadrant, I'm sorry, one quadrant negative, one quadrant positive. Uh, so we take the first and fourth quadrants for the, uh, for the, the basically the range of the tangent inverse, and it's going to spit out negative 45 degrees, right? But, but it's not. Because which, if you actually graph this point, you'd go which direction to the to the left or right? You'd go left one, right? Oh, so and up one. It'd be in the second quadrant. So really, the way you want to think about it is reference angles. Once again, especially if you're not dealing with nice numbers. So the reference angle would be just 45 degrees, right? And you can get that without a cal. You should be able to get that without a calculator. You should know that. Uh, just delete the negative on the one. You should know the tangent of 45 is equal to one, right? So, for, so alpha, the the reference angle is 45 degrees. In the second quadrant, what do you do to find theta? You take the straight angle minus 45. So, what do we get? 135. 135. Okay. So, what's the point? So, you do r comma theta. So root 2, 135 would be one representation of it. x equals negative 4. We don't have a whole lot of choices here, right? So we want to go, we want to convert, this is what, what coordinate system is this in? And by the way, what is it? It graphs to be what? A vertical line at, at, at a horizontal position of negative 4, right? That's, that's nice to keep in mind. And it's actually a very simple equation, isn't it? x equals negative 4. Let's switch to polar and see if we get a more complicated equation or less complicated equation. So we don't have much of a choice here. What is x in polar coordinates? Yeah. So r cosine theta is equal to negative 4. It doesn't look simpler to me. But sometimes equations that have, especially ones that have radial symmetry, like circles, are, are simpler simpler in, in uh, polar coordinates. This one is not. Um, so wh what might we do to irritate you here? Uh, actually, it's not to irritate you. Your calculator has a polar mode. And the only way you can type in equations is if you solve them for r. Because it's like, you know how in re rectangular coordinates, it's y1 equals whatever. In polar coordinates, it's like r1 equals something in terms of theta. So you need to be able to solve these things for r. Um, so we do that. We divide both sides by cosine. cosine theta. And you get negative 4 over cosine theta. What's a, a nice way to write that? So r equals negative 4 over cosine theta. What's a nice way to write that? Negative 4 times oh. secant. Oh. secant theta. There's more trig review for you, right? 1 over cosine theta is secant theta. So that would be a nice way to write it. Now, if you were going to plug it in your calculator, though, you'd have to type it in as negative 4 divided by cosine theta. All right. That, now, the temptation might be to divide through by y here to make it a simpler equation. I, I wouldn't do that. It, it, you might lose, well, you'll lose this, the solution where y equals 0. So be careful when you do that. Uh, if you're in doubt, don't, di don't, don't divide through by a function or a letter if you're ever in doubt. So let's just do the conversion then. Uh, what's y, okay, what's y equal to in polar? R sine theta. So let's just replace y with r sine theta in both y squared and, and the 4y. So it would be r sine theta quantity squared. Yeah. So we could make it on the left side 
r sine theta in parentheses, the whole thing squared, and then equals four times uh, r sine theta. And then how could we rewrite that? Just r squared sine squared, squared theta equals four r sine theta. Now you can just leave the answer like this if you want. In the directions here, you're told to graph. What would the graph r equal two look like? Doesn't tell you what theta is, so what can theta be? Anything. Okay, and a radius is always two. That sounds like a definition from geometry. Radius is always two. Theta can be anything. Circle, right? So, um, and, and it's really easy to graph it. I mean, if you go out a distance uh, from the pole, a distance of one, two, and you let theta range from zero to two pi, you've, you've carved out the whole circle. And then if theta gets bigger or smaller, bigger than two, two pi or smaller than zero radians, it just, it's at the circle in some other spot, right? It just keep, in other words, if you kept letting theta get bigger, you'd keep going round and round the circle when you're plotting points. What's the analogous equation in rectangular coordinates to r equals two? I mean, if you needed to, you could go ahead and multiply both sides by, well, you know, you don't want to multiply both sides by r. You could square both sides. Y you get r squared equals four, but r squared is really x squared plus y squared equals four, right? Now, this is a circle centered at zero, 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 um, with radius two, and, and so is this guy, right? Which, here's my point. What, which equation is simpler, r equals 2 or x squared plus y squared equals 4? r equals 2. r equals 2. So some equations are simpler in polar, some equations are simpler in rectangular. Theta equals pi thirds. Okay, think about it. Now what can r be? Anything. And, but theta is always in one direction, pi thirds. So what, ha what kind of object has to be carved out? A line. A line, yeah. So where did we say pi thirds was? It was in this direction, right? 60 degrees. So just draw a line along that spoke, and since, R, since we allow R to go negative, could go down here as well. Uh, it, it would be a good exercise to convert this thing to um, rectangular. What could we do to both sides? plug both sides into the tangent function, right? Because, okay, so, so follow me here. Tan okay, we plug both sides into the tangent function. If theta equals pi over three, then tangent theta should equal tangent pi over three. But what is the tangent of theta in, in relation to x and y? y over x. It's y over x, it's exactly y over x. And w w pi over three happens to be a nice number. A nice, well, it's a nice, it's a nice angle. What's the tangent of pi thirds? Root three? Yeah. So you get y over x equals root three, or even better if you multiply both sides by x, root three x, right? Not that you needed to convert it. it the directions didn't say to, but it's, it's, it'll, it'll come up at some point in your math life. So that's, that's how you do it. Take the tangent of both sides.